we still have a few more weeks of winter left and here in in zone 5b it is March right now and it's the perfect time to winter sow. What is winter sowing? And why would you winter sow? And when do you winter sow? In this video, I'll answer all of those questions. Hello garden friends and welcome to my channel, DK's Garden Oasis. I am Debbie and I'm a master gardener and butterfly raising hobbyist. On this channel, gardeners of any skill level will learn to bloom, grow, and conserve in your garden. Make sure you stay till the end for a tip for your house plants. Today I'm going to demonstrate different methods of winter sowing and I found a definition for the USDA thesaurus. The definition reads, a propagation method used throughout the winter where temperature climate seeds are sown into protective vented containers and placed outdoors to foster a naturally timed high percentage germination of climate tolerated seedlings. In layman's terms, it's planting in the winter and letting nature take its course. Why winter sow? It's inexpensive, it saves space, and there's no need for lights and expensive equipment. Also, the seedlings are hardier and they don't need to be hardened off since they're already exposed to weather. When should you winter sow? There's no set time, but here, like I said, in zone 5B, it's the uh, beginning of March, so I generally winter sow at the end of February, beginning of March, so that I can transplant by mid-May, end of May. You can also put your seeds in the refrigerator. What types of seeds do you winter sow? I, since I butterfly garden, um, I, the first year I planted milkweed, so you can do that. In your packets you're going to see words like cold stratify, scarification, uh, spring sown, pre-chill, words like that you're going to see on the back of your packets. And I have one that shows that. This is the blue mist flower, and you can see that it shows 60 days of stratification. So this one I put in a milk jug. Some flower varieties are milkweed, snapdragons, and delphinium to name a few. Herbs are oregano, dill, and mint. Vegetables would be your cool hardy vegetables like lettuce, broccoli, or cabbage. What kind of supplies do you need to winter sow? I'm going to show you three methods. The milk jug method, plastic bag method, and then um, your raised beds, also another method that I'm going to be demonstrating today. So the, the first method is your milk jug. And you need a milk jug, a utility knife, some duct tape, something to put your seeds in, a label, a marking pen, of course your seeds and your soil. The second method is the plastic bag method. And this you just need a heavy duty plastic bag. You need a couple clothespins. You need your label and your marker. Of course your seeds. And a bamboo stake. That's the second method. The third method is your raised beds. And you can put maybe a pla plastic bin over them and put a heavy brick on top or what I'm going to be doing is plastic over it until they germinate. So I have some raised beds and I will show you that and I'm going to be planting some onions in those. Okay and this is an example of one that's already done. So I have the plastic uh, milk jug actually this is a water jug this is your duct tape um, I wrote the name of the seeds also labels inside with your soil so that's the first method second method is the plastic bag method and this is your soil there's a couple clothespins to hold it open so that it gets air and it also is exposed to the water. And then this is going to be a skewer that I'm going to kind of put in my raised bed so it can kind of just hang there like that. I happen to see that the plastic bag method I saw online on a Garden Answer YouTube video and she has been an inspiration for me gardening. I wanted to show you what I do have in my milk, milk jugs. I did 10 um, to get started. I'm going to do a few more, but these are some of them that I did put in the milk jugs. I did three 
for my veggies. They are spearmint, dill, that is for my black swallowtails. It is a host plant for the black swallowtail and I'll explain more in a future video about what I, uh, what I grow for the black swallowtails. And then I'm going to be growing some Brussels sprouts also in the milk jugs. My pollinators, I am growing the blue mist flower, echinacea, and then I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be doing also the common milkweed. Finally, I'm going to be doing some flowers. I did some violas, some foxglove, and a butterfly bush. I have a butterfly bush, but I thought I'd try this. In my bags, I am growing for my flowers, the plastic bags, I'm growing hollyhocks, campanella, I think that's how you say it, Iceland poppies, and just to compare the viola again. So I have one in the milk jug and one in the plastic bag. I'm going to see how they compare. The plastic bags for the pollinators, I have Asclepius, and that is uh, butterfly wheat. I have some more poppies, and that is it for the plastic bags. Um, I am going to be showing you in the plastic bags another type of milkweed. This is the part that I look forward to every season is actually getting my hands dirty and planting seeds. We've talked about where to buy your seeds and also the supplies and equipment to buy your seeds. And I will leave a link in the description below for both of those videos. Okay, this is what we have here. I have a bin to put my soil in, and it's a little accessory tray. I've got my gloves, I've got my soil, my vermiculite. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure, I will get my gloves on here, that the soil is moistened. And what you wanna do is make sure when you squeeze it that you might have a little bit of see how this is kind of falling apart so I'm going to add just a little bit of water and so what you're going to do I'm using some potting soil and then I'm going to add some seed starting mix on top and then some vermiculite to hold in the moisture. Um, as I said before in a previous video, vermiculite is to retain moisture. So I just put it on there um, just because uh, I don't always have a chance to go out there and check the bags. I do try to periodically check them to make sure there's, they're dampened. Um, and if I need to, I just go out there with a the water jug and give them a little bit of water. So what you want to do is now I can feel that there's a little bit of moisture in this and it's sticking together. So what you want to do, let me take this off, is I have a milk jug here and you don't need the lid so you can throw that away. You take your utility knife and I usually start right by the handle and I go right about, I don't know how many inches that is, maybe six inches. And I just cut around. until you get to the other side. Leave about, I don't know, maybe two inches. And you just open it. Oops. You open it so it kind of hinges, so I need to cut this just a little bit more. And also, what you, sh what you should also do is make some holes at the bottom. If you want, you can do that right away. Just make some holes on the bottom. And that is for drainage. And then I also, um, I'm gonna put some on the top as well. And then what we need to do next is take, 
What we need to do next is take your marking pen and I am going to be doing I'm going to be doing this milkweed. Like I said, this was the very first thing that I went to sow uh, a few years ago. So I know this works. Um, Common sometimes has a little problem transplanting, but I'm going to try it again since that's what the monarchs seem to like the best. You can also plant swamp or like I have the butterfly weed. So, and on the back is the instructions. It says two to four weeks before your average frost date, but I'm going to start this earlier and when it's ready, they will start sprouting. So I'm going to be planting these. And so I need to write on the milk jug. I put the company just so I know who I bought the seeds from. So it's Botanical Interests. I put the date, which is the 2nd of March. And then I put the name of the, the, the actual name of the plant, which is Common Milkweed. All right. So that is done, and now I also, um, just for to make sure that I have the name, I don't want to misplace or forget what this was. What this was, I also put a little label in there. So I'm going to also label this the botanical interests, common milkweed. Okay, whoops, running out of room. Okay, so that's done. Now put my glove back on. All right, I'll put my glove back on and put the soil in. So I put it, um, usually I just put it all the way up to the, the part that's cut here. So I am going to tap that down a little bit put some more in there like I said this is just re regular um, potting soil it's still light enough you don't really want to use garden soil because that's a little bit too heavy so this potting soil um, just because eventually they are going to be put out in the garden and they will be exposed the roots will be growing through this um, potting soil, so that should be good. So what I'm going to do next is get some seed starting mix. And I'm just going to sprinkle that in there. Tap it down a little bit. I also spray it down because it does need to be damp. So I do water that down. And then what I do is I take my seeds. Okay. And then I have my seeds. These are pretty good size, so I should be good. So what I'm going to do is just place those in here. I'm going to try to sprinkle those around. And I also have some in my fridge that I took um, from my milkweed from last year. I took the seeds and I'll show you what that looks like further on in the season. But I'm going to plant those in my garden. But I'm just going to try to grow some as well. So I have my seeds as you can see in there. And I'm going to cover it again with a little bit of seed starting mix. This happens to be miracle Grow, but you can use whatever you have. Dampen it again. And then I'm going to take my vermiculite. And this is just to retain moisture, as I said previously. Dampen it off again. I'm going to be getting it moist. And then I just put another 
layer on. And I pre-measured the duct tape just so that it, for time's purposes. So I have my strip of duct tape. And I usually try to start at the hinge and just wrap it around like so. I might have to stick it on there a little bit. There we go. All right, that one is good to go. Um, it's my milkweed, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it outside. I'll show you uh, what that looks like when we go outside to do the onions. So that is the milk jug method. Now I'm going to be doing the plastic bag method, and I'm also going to be doing milkweed, but it's called Tweedy Tweedia. Um, so I'm going to try this. It says it's a butterfly flower for pollinators, um, and I've never seen this one, so I'm going to give it a try. I'm not sure if it's um, native to our area, so I'm going to look that up, but I am going to be trying this, and it says, again, two to four weeks before your average frost, so I'm going to give these a try as well for my pollinators. So, let's see what these look like. And you know what? I forgot to put my label in the jug, so I will open that back up and put that label in. But I did forget to put that in, so you want, don't want to forget that. Um, just in case the writing, I did get that UV marker, but just in case, I like to put the tag in there. So I'm going to put that in there. So what you're going to need to do with the plastic bag is... going to need to put some holes in the bottom. So I just cut some holes, make some little slices in there so that it can have some drainage. I also put a couple at the top. You want to write what we're planting. So we are doing botanical interests. And this is Tweedia milkweed. And the date. So I got the bag and then I'm going to do the label again. Try not to forget to put it in the bag this time. Tweedia milkweed. Okay glove back on. Okay, so what we're doing for this one, I generally, I'm going to fill it up till maybe that white part right here on the bag. And like I said, this is the first year I'm trying this, so I'm not sure how this method is going to be, but I thought, hey, there's not a lot of supplies you need for this. What a great idea if it does work. And I would imagine it would because it's going to be like a little greenhouse. So again, I'm just putting in the soil till it reaches that area. Tamp it down. Butter it a little bit. Get my seeds. Let's see how little these are. Okay, so I have my seeds, and then I'm just going to drop those, scatter those on the top here. Put some more 
seed starting mix on top. Wet it. Put some vermiculite in it. Wet it one more time. And then a little bit more vermiculite. And then what you do is you are going to close it to about, about two inches or so. And then I just kind of open it like that. I put one clothespin on one end, the other one on the other end, and that should be enough to let air and moisture go in. And then what I do is I'm going to take this skewer, it has a sharp point on here, so I'm going to just skewer this plastic bag, and then I'm going to hang it in my raised bed. Now, of course, Maybe you don't need this skewer. Um, you could just lay them in, but I don't know if these will get blown away, if it's heavy enough, but you could give it a try. So I'm gonna try this in my raised beds. I have four raised beds outside. Currently I have asparagus in one bed. Um, I had that from last year. I put garlic in last fall, and then I'm gonna be saving one for my onions that I'm gonna be doing the winter sowing. And the last one, I'm not sure yet exactly what I'm gonna be using it for, maybe peppers. So that's my third method. What method do you use when you winter sow? Or which method will you try this year? Please leave a comment below. Coming soon, I'm gonna be planting ranunculus and anemones and also I'm going to be visiting a local garden so make sure you like subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos now I'm going to be sharing a tip for your house plants thanks for watching happy gardening bye bye